Before we can learn how to add create, update, and delete to our controllers, we need to learn more about using forms in Rails. We'll take a deeper dive into forms later on, but I'd like to at least introduce them now. When working with forms, we're going to be using several Rails helper methods to help us to write the form HTML. And there's two things I want you to keep in mind while we're using these helper methods. The first is that anything we can write with the helpers can also be written with simple HTML. That's all the helpers are doing. They're helping us to write HTML. The end result, what goes to the browser, is still HTML. The second point is that writing code using the helpers is almost always going to be easier, more powerful, and have all sorts of extra benefits than if we'd written it with just simple HTML alone. You'll start to see why that's true in the following examples. Let's begin by just looking at an HTML form. You see that my form action is going to be subjects create. That's the URL the form will submit to. We know that Rails routing will translate that into the subjects controller and the create action. It's exactly where we want this to go. Notice that the method on the form is post. That's different from what we get if we click on a link or if we type in a URL. Then inside the form, you'll see that I've got three text input fields for name, position, and visible, followed by a submit button that says create subject. So it's just a very basic create a new subject form. As I said before, this simple HTML version will absolutely work inside your Rails application. It will display the form and it will submit values just fine. And what we'll get when we click on this form and submit those values to the create action is we'll get a set of post parameters. And post parameters are accessed in the exact same way that the get parameters were. We just say params name, params position, params visible, just like we did for params ID. If we want to take those and construct a new subject from it, then we could just say subject.new and put together a hash using each of those values. So in the simplest way, this is how we can work with forms in Rails. But there's a lot of improvements that we can make. The first improvement is that it's very tedious for us to go through and build this hash by grabbing each one of the parameters by name. Imagine if we had 40 of these. Well, there's a better way to do it, and it's part of HTML, not Rails. Let's go back and look at our HTML form. But now notice what I've got as my name value. Instead of just being name equals name, name equals position, name equals visible, now I've got that in square brackets and subject before each one. This is just basic HTML, but what it does is it allows HTML to submit these values grouped together as part of subject. It's a form array. And once we submit this form, we'll still have access to those values in the controller as name, position, and visible. We'll just have to specify that we want to start by looking in the subject hash to find those attributes. In fact, we can see that whole subject hash with just params subject. And this is where it really pays benefits, because now we can create a new subject by just saying subject.new and passing in that hash. The hash is built for us by the way that we constructed our form. So we no longer have to go through and itemize each of the attributes. We can just trust that all the attributes are going to be grouped together by the form, and we can drop them all into subject, and we're ready to go. OK, but we still haven't used any Rails helper methods. Let's go back to our form again. This is the nested parameters version in HTML only. And now I'm going to switch to the Rails version. Remember, you can scrub back and forth in the video if you want to compare the two. In the Rails version, we're going to use the form tag helper. The form tag is going to take as an argument the URL that we want to submit to, and we can pass in a, a Rails hash to it. So we can have action create, and it will already assume which controller we're talking about based on which controller we're in right now. Notice then I've got the do at the end of that line. That's a code block. Everything down from do to end is going to be part of the form. And it'll know, hey, when I'm done with the form, then I need to close the form tag and put that ending form tag at the end. In between now, instead of just having HTML, I'm also going to use a couple of other helpers. The text field tag will take care of outputting the text field for me, and I just have to tell it what I want this text field to be called. Subject name, subject position, subject visible. And then look at that submit tag. That really saves us a lot of typing. I always have a hard time remembering what a submit tag structure looks like. Now I can just type submit tag and what text I want to go on that button. So you can see that we've saved ourselves a lot of typing and we've been able to do it in a very Ruby sort of way. But there's another improvement that we can make here. Text field tag will output the attribute for us just fine. And we can even tell it what its default value ought to be. But we can have it do it that automatically if we instead use just a text field helper. Not text field tag, just text field. And notice now the arguments are different. Instead of passing in a string of what I want that to be called, now I'm telling it what object it belongs to and what attribute on the object. The major benefit of this is that now Rails will automatically check to see if we have an instance variable called subject. And if we have one, then it will use it the value of name to pre-populate the name field, the value of position to pre-populate the position field, and so on. So you can see we're using the Rails helper here offers us an extra benefit, because now suddenly it's object aware. It's aware of the subject object. 
Now there's one additional improvement that I want to make to this. Notice that every time I'm calling the text field, I'm saying, hey, it's that subject object again. Hey, I'm talking about the subject object again. I'm repeating myself every single time. Well, instead, if this form is for an object, then I can just create a form for the object. So instead of using form tag, I'm using form underscore for. It's a different helper. Form for subject. That's what I'm creating a form for. It's a form for my subject. So I'll just tell you that right at the start. Notice that URL is declared a little bit differently. URL and then the hash arrow and then the hash for where it should go to. And then after do, notice that I've also got upright bars with an F between them. We call those pipes. What I'm saying is take this subject and make it available as the variable F. So F is now the subject. It's the form object. That's why it's called F. The form object. So take subject and based off of subject, give me a text field for name. Based off of subject, give me a text field for position. You can see how we're not repeating ourselves as much here. And it's also much clearer that this whole form is for our subject object. Now once again, each one of these forms that we've looked at will absolutely work in Rails. You can use any of them. And there'll be times when form for won't be the thing that you need for a form. You'll need to go back to using form tag instead. But whenever possible, I think it's preferable to try and use the more advanced versions than the more primitive versions. We're going to try and stick with form for as much as we can throughout the tutorial. Okay, now I think we have a fundamental grasp of forms. We're ready to see how we can implement the create part of CRUD in our controllers.